race night in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Cup race 3 of 4 at Zandvoort we just finished free practice and um, well I didn't do to get there uh, 5 seconds off the top um, but the top time was indeed the time which I normally drive in my Aston Martin and now it's raining which sucks even more uh, so well, let's just put a wet bracelet on it and you make a wet qualification Zot for circuit is in my home country, so nominally I know the circuit, but I don't. I'm not very intimate with it. And so well, me and the Super Trofeo have a hate-hate relationship. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. It's uh, what you could say a slow circuit, but it has. Point oh 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 fast points in it. And it feels fast because it's windy. It's in the dunes near the sea. Zandvoort is a coastal town, and um, it's narrow, meaning that you get a sensation of speed which you don't necessarily have. Most corners are in the first or even s or second uh, gear. There are some fast corners, but not much, not many. Ari Leijendijk bocht, corner, turn, oh, oh, and onto the straight. I don't think I've ever driven Zandvoort in the wet, so... Doing it all a bit slower than I'm used to. Just to put a time in. Because who knows, with rain, anything is possible. The Schijfla corner, I don't know all the corners by name, but I know some. Most corners have, some corners have the name of famous Dutch drivers and then some have just names which are sponsors. Like the Marlboro and the Vodafone and the... I don't know the exact places of those corners. I know the next one, that's the Audi S. That would be this one. This snapper to the right, the Kumho. In real life, now this is a banked corner, of course. Now going to the Adelaidek, the banked corner leading back onto the straight. Uh, 
was the best. Which isn't saying much, personal best. Nine out of eleven. <laughs> That I suck in the super trofeo, but in the wet it's. People drive in a 148, and I'm like, how? But like I said earlier in this, uh, these races, I signed up in this championship because it's fun. This is a fun group. FD Racing Department is a really fun group to race with. Oh, oh, oh! Climb and slide off. Never drive a Lamborghini again, it will be too soon. Schijflak. Feel the car sliding under me. Into the Marlboro. Turned on my ABS and traction control a bit. It seems to help a lot. On the timing at least. Handling is a bit better. Oh. If here it wants to slide. It's like no downforce on the on the end, on the back side. Back in nine. Careful is at the end, the, the final two corners. Also here, the really quick corners, it doesn't behave well on the back end. Wants to slide around. Well, if the race is going to be what it's going to be interesting.
Om te combo. Hak de inside. Ari Lionbike. Here it starts to get slippery. This is where it doesn't shine. I have to really hold back. Because normally you can accelerate fully out of this corner onto the straight. Wow. What's also difficult about Zandvoort is that the braking points are not well defined. Some corners have a orange marker on the fence the arm goes which help and the Tarzan the first corner and just before Audi S there's a stripe along the road the line on the road Ooh. which helps as a reference point but a lot of corners don't have that so you have to really judge it, like here. You don't really have a, an idea where a good breaking point is, and because it also winds up again. Same here. This is a tight corner, so it's easy to be late here, and then go up to the sand. a line I have to use that line otherwise I won't make the corner here's an orange marker on the inside At least I bettered my time somewhat. so easy to overdrive this car I'm mentioning more and more, noticing more and more that if I just take it easy, don't overdrive I'm actually quicker even though it feels very lazy if I compare that with the Aston Martin V8 which I drive mostly at the moment at least and I can push that and push that and push that and get faster and faster and here it seems like the other way around second line Marker too wide. No, 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 no. Ah, damage. That means the next lap will also be shite. As my straight speed is down the drain this one Yeah. 
Oh, come on. Let him pass. Let's try one more time. high Betterment of the time, as, as it looks like now. Let's not jinx it in the final corner. One and a half seconds faster. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, not as it matters. Still 10 out of 11. Lower than me. There we go. Come on, come on, come on. And that was it. 10 out of 11. I'd hoped for a bit more in the rain. But as it stands, I'm fine with it. Session is now over. Let's put 
Gut, ich raute. Innocenti. Oh, that's a lot slower than me. Only three seconds slower than the fastest. Paolo Di Leo at front. That's good. Roberto Bono second. Richie third. Miguel Kaspric fourth. There are only 11 of us. I think we were 15 last race. Uh, more people don't like this car, I guess. <laughs> GT3 Championship, of which a great video is now out on the FD Race Department YouTube about the whole season. Compilation video, very cool. But that was about, I think, 25, 30 cars total. So this is a lot smaller. Oh, this is bad. Red, 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 red. Half of it was good. 48, 8 was the best. Thirty-four, nine, thirty-four, and one. So losing almost a second in the first part, oh, and it's done. Okay, on with the race. One hour race, and like normal with FD Race Department, the one hour race has a twenty-minute stop window from the fortieth minutes to end to the twenty minutes to end. The mandatory stop requires at least one liter of fuel to be loaded. And nothing else. Uh, watch the blue flags. A blue flag, uh, ignor ignoring a blue flag will result in a penalty if ignored for three turns. Which is fast at Sandford. As the turns are, well, always there. I think there's barely a, a, sma a straight part. Only the straight. It's hard finish. Otherwise, everything is bendy, and windy. But we'll see. I expect to get a blue flag somewhere. <laughs> I guess I'll set my up. If I'm at the back, I'll do my pit stop as soon as, soon as possible, and then just drive my race. See what happens. Okay, so let's wait. There's a waiting period also for the race, I think two or three minutes to get set up. I should do more setup on these cars, but I basically don't have time in real life to go out practicing, setting up the car for these races. My home is in shambles, I'm in a home renovation at the moment, so with working at home and People working here, tearing down my house and making it anew. And with me myself doing some paint jobs in the evening. It's very hard to uh, find the time to really practice and really set up the car the way I like it. And, well, to be fair, I've already found that setting up this car would be pointless. Putting time in that because I'll probably ne never race this car again. <laughs> Okay, what do we have? We have sun and some clouds for at least 30 minutes. Track temperature 90 to 22. That means I can have my aggressive setup, which I made from the default aggressive setup, but I've set it up for myself on these temperatures. Meaning. Let's take a new tire set. Two point seven per lap. Well, let's do one hundred liters. Set it on one liter. See what happens. Um, some tire pressure stuff for the temperatures. Mechanical grip of the stereo should be fifteen because, like I mentioned earlier on this car, I find it steers like a truck. Um, steer ratio for me is way too low so I have to turn my wheel way more than on other cars to get the same 
corner entry that I have of other cars. So these are basically my only um, setups, setup changes that I've done. Okay, 100 liters, one pit stop, one liter to add, and keeping the same tire set. Unless, of course, maybe the rain comes during the race, then everything will be different. But we'll see about that. Normally the weather forecast is 30 minutes ahead, so I'll take the chance to make an early pit stop or I'll do it at halfway race. We go racing! Single formation lap for the whole formation. that is good about this car is the sound that screaming V10 engine Right corner, go uphill. And you see everything is windy. It's in the dunes, like I said, near the near the coast. Basically, the North Sea is just behind the pit straight, finish straight. Then you only have a uh, a road, Zandvoort Boulevard, and behind that you have the, the beaches and uh, and the sea. I was here in real life two weeks ago. Made a. Uh, a hike around the circuit. Which isn't that long to be fair because it's it's windy in itself as a circuit, not as a, a whole. The old circuit was, that was a really big bit of s old spa fuckershawish circuit shaped like a turtle. Anyone has ever seen an old Grand Prix or on YouTube or played Grand Prix Legends driven the old Zandvoort then you know what I'm talking about then it's, that's a very fast circuit winding and only few uh, tighter corners Most of the corners now are gone. Behind this corner up here is a vacation park, holiday park now. Well, normally from the old circuit you would join here again. It was called the Panorama corner, now it's called the Adelaide corner. The Dutch two time Indy 500 winner. Okay, we're lined up, ready to go. Front tires are a bit cold yet, still. So have to take it easy, but hell, I'm slow anyway. So go, taking go. it easy is fine. Here we go, go go go. Careful. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Let's not bump anyone off, let others do that for me. Because it's windy and it's narrow, it's very easy to touch someone here. Make a mistake. You can try to pass, but... More often than not, it will end in tears.
Everybody survived the first corner. That's a uh, a novelty, especially here or in any track that has a narrow corner at the start, like Monza. dislike about this car is when you put down the throttle it immediately wants to understeer oh 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 watch it now it wants to understeer which is in my mind crazy for a mid-engine car I would expect mid-corner twitchiness meaning oversteer instead of understeer So for the most part it's me having adjustment issues from my front engine biasness. But hey, it's racing and racing school. Even if I'm slowest. with only 11 drivers being in second down I'm in the points <laughs> Slow car ahead. not counting on finishing there Can't accelerate full out of here because of that understeering. Well done, mate. Fast to slow. Like I said, I really have to adjust to that because every car I've driven here, which being a front engine cars, which I would expect to understeer, don't understeer out of the corner. Go full out on that corner. See the difference here. Next one is already six to seven seconds away from me.
sloppy. Yellow flag, yellow flag, be careful there. Slow car ahead. Well, if other people make mistakes, maybe I can capitalize on it. Tires finally all temps. Pressures, although the right front seems to be a bit cold. And as usual, the left rear is getting warm. It seems to be a character trait for every Lamborghini in this sim. Getting into my groove, even if it's a slow groove, I don't mind. I do like its sound and I do like its acceleration because it has so much torque this engine. Acceleration is very good. basically the engine type that has powered Formula 1 for so many years before we went on to screaming V8s and now on those 1.6 liters hybrid things Of course, this being a very much more heavier car, I think the wood comes at about 1300, 1400 kilograms. I see a yellow flag at the corner of my eye. Slow 
do like this track though. This track is a slow track, but it feels very fast because of its narrowness. It's a bit like Brands Hatch. Where you're almost never in a straight line, always counteracting, always reacting. And with the track being narrow, feeling very fast. Alton Park is another one that's in the sim recently in the British GT GLC. It has the same feel to it. Maybe even more so. The forecast still sunny. I'm a bit wary of it since the qualification was wet. Well, the skies look clear enough. So. Watch that. It's not a puncture, but pressure was not okay. When I need the right front, like in this corner. See the number one going over the finish line at 139. It's insane. I can do a 135, 136 with the Aston Martin GT3 here. But me and the Lambo will never be friends. Especially not the Super Trofeo. Right front holding steady 26.8, which is too soft. Let's see what it does. Somebody has issues. Matteo Capogreco. Oh, the right tire is doing something to my handling. If it stays like this, I'm not going to change it because it pit stop with a tire change will put me back 30 seconds. Fuel only, especially one liter only. It's like three second pit stop. Add tires into the mix with only two people able to work at the car. As GT rules state. GT3 rules. Can't just change one tire. No, 
not out of the groove. Let's do something stupid. The US issues. Oh. Finding myself my own issues now. level 75 I did 100 so I should be able to make it it's 25 per quarter of an hour not counting the formation lap One liter pit stop should suffice. Four here. Just go to three and then back to two. Instead of overdriving it to be as fast as possible there. It's just not worth it. Just not enough for a pit stop now. We'll take the gamble to take a pit stop next rep. This is a lovely track, with a lot of height differences, meaning that it's always fun to watch a race here. The difficulty is only that it's so windy that I fear that the next Formula 1 race here in September, the first one in I think 36 years or something, the last one is 85, oh yeah, 36 will be a parade, like Monaco for instance. I think they just crammed in too many corners. Too narrow track, meaning that overtaking is very hard to do here.
bit of repairs. Only a little, doesn't matter. Oh, oh, oh my god. And there's the number one. Lap down to number one. Very soon the other ones, others will follow. Even the number one is in his class of his own because he's like 14 seconds ahead of the number two. Come to think of it, it's quite insane as a difference. You know, it's the same cars. It's not like in Formula One where you have a Mercedes racing and a Haas or something. On the steering, mongrel. Right front has seems to have miraculously secured itself. As the pressure dropped to 26.8, it's now back to fast approaching me faster car coming up behind watch out let him buy on the straight He is exit speed on the straight, so he has done something on his on his setup that, that I can't understand. Because his exit ex exit speed from the final core from the ILI deck is so much more than mine. And I bet it has something to do about the oversteer understeer that I'm seeing when trying to exit the corner. Take a look at that for the final race next week. See if I can tweak something for that race. Oh. But okay. Blue flex, not ignored.
Oh, that's a good one. God damn it. You keep missing my breaking point there. Now I'm in contention, behind me is the number 9. He's faster than me. But overtaking is difficult here. Mistakes like this. Sustain at Richie, the number one, who overtook me after my pit stop is already Power 30 right. seconds, 30 Power seconds right. away. It's insane. The speed that that guy can extract from this car. Don't slide, the mother. Ugh. We are halfway through. Keep pushing. Ah! Got some light damage on the front. Crappy shitbox of a car. My, the one chasing me won't be happy.
Let's take it easy. For some reason, I'm quite fast for my doing this lap. And I don't know why. <laughs> Must be the first part of the track. Maybe it's just because I'm losing weight on the fuel. In any case, I don't mind. Everything in front of me and behind me has made their pit stops. No, 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 no. Sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. But Bruno is behind me and he's a fast guy. He was in second. So something must have happened with him also. Qualified second, I think. car doesn't even have usable mirrors so I have no clue where he is despite by looking on the map of course and behind that is the guy I accidentally bumped into when I lost the, end, the rear end of the car But it's not a blue flag situation, so go nuts, Roberto. Yeah, of course this does help. Car on the right. Clear on the right. Okay, silly mistakes by on break Car points. On yeah, here he comes. Maybe I can have break him. No, that's bad. That's a bad idea. Too narrow to do crap like that. It's basically just one racing line. One and two are approaching again.
left. Clear on the left. Faster car coming up behind you. Hey, go boss. Forty must be something that they found in the set of oh crap! Fuck it! And there he goes. To counter that exit corner understeer. This is what's really, really bugging me this track with the default aggressive setup. Ricci, 143, 145 for me. Plenty more. Oh, Gibelisco, and after that, it's many more seconds. Kaspajik, Cecchinello. Safest way to do it here, instead of in the windy bits.
too fast. Miss the break point. Breakpoint. This doesn't help, of course. Curious though that if I look at normal normal GT3 races with all kinds of makes of cars, I see closer racing than in a single make championship like this. So the driver is really important here. And you'd think that with all those uh, same car makes and models, that the racing would be closer, that people would be more together. As it stands, you see people two, three to ten seconds apart, keeping up with each other. Not driving away from each other, but still. Of an hour to go, 15 minutes, 40 minutes even, and I'm fairly intense. Normally, my aspiration to be top 10, and of course, with 11 drivers, that shouldn't be too hard, but in any case, I'm happy. Number four is approaching me to let me. This is where my main deficiency is. Output out of that last corner onto the straight. All the other corners have it of course. But if you can't exit the corner onto a straight faster, faster than the rest, or do you do or if you do it slower than the rest, whatever you want to call it. Lose 
lose so much speed over a lap. Put it down here. I'll just drift out into the barrier. I'm again skirting my own time. A bit faster, a bit slower, a bit faster, a bit slower. Because 144s are about the limit I can take this car to in its current faster setup. Now you can stuff it. Not going slower here. Let you have me on the straight. Slow coming out there anyway. Go nuts. Number 11 is 50 seconds behind me. So unless I do something really stupid, I guess the 10th spot is in the pocket. Oh, come on, man. Concentrate. It's too bad that I have a job and as otherwise I would sign up for races that would be in the mornings. help concentration a bit. Ah, it's not too bad that I have a job. It's better. Steady income is good. Pays for races. <laughs> Oh, 
lost a car coming up behind you. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Tired. It's hot up here in the attic as well. I begin to understand more and more that the latest hype at Twitch is doing your gaming from a swimming pool. No, I'm not going there. You won't see me on a webcam in a swimming pool. <laughs> Plenty of fuel to spare, still got 33 liters, With 5 minutes of racing. I can take it easy basically. The one to overtake is 15 seconds in front of me, driving better times than me. And the one to defend off is 55 seconds behind me. With something like 4 minutes to go. Like I said, I find it quite remarkable that the, the differences are so fast between drivers, all using the same cars, it can't be all set up. Good setup can make you one and a half, one and a half to one second faster tops. That's, that's really the limit. comes down to skill then and your uh, ease with the car both of which I'm well lacking but still Highly noticeable. Slow car ahead.
Second to last lap, I guess. No, 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 don't do that. Yes. That instability of this car. I never get used to it. Leader on final lap. Which means in one hour he's already almost left me twice. Insane. This guy in this combination with his car is really a winner. The number one even has left the number seven. Robert De Bono, he's no and he's no dummy. He's fast as well. Ah, oh, left leg off. I have to do one more lap. Which of course. Man oh man oh man. Want to see me make no mistakes? Come look tomorrow at the RCI Amateur Champion GT3 Championship. There I'll be driving an Aston Martin V8, which is at the moment by far my favorite car. And I barely make mistakes in that.
But all in all, still a fun race. For all my bitching and griping about this car, I am learning and anticipating. So who knows? I might even go enjoying a normal GT3 Lamborghini or an Audi or some other mid-engine car. Well, we all finished. I'll just park it here. Play. Save the highlights. Okay, let's look at the highlights shortly. Okay. Well, it's not saved. That's weird. This is May 20, May 28. <coughs> weird. I saved it. Oh, maybe it's, of course. No, wait a minute. Gallery. Automatically saved. Here, this one. Let's see from the outside. Race starts. Me in the blue. White with a touch of orange. It's a field of over 11 cars, that's a bit of a shame. a lot of flow with the circuits flowing across the dunes overtaken by Bramal Gils is that where we had the little accident yeah point lap 17 I apologize to him I lost the car ah and he went nose first in the barrier Yeah, that was a bit of a bummer. Good overtake. Of course, here I tried to outbreak him, but on that line, it's basically not possible. Heels again. Bit of a twitch, Tarzan, and then you're done. You see it's all over, but you see it twitching, you see the car either not gripping at the front or twitching at the back. This will take time on me. Okay, anyways, this was our race tonight. Naturally, fire corner. The, um, tomorrow, RCI race in the amateur split driving the Aston Martin. I think it's two hours at Solar, so that will be a, a, a tough one. Two hours race. 
So, maybe catch you later. Thanks for watching. See ya.